I'm glad that you're here and those who are joining us by live stream as well as those in the fellowship hall, welcome to worship this morning. Uh, several announcements we need to highlight this morning. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Devin Blake who were married yesterday afternoon and what a wonderful time that was, a beautiful time and so if you haven't seen them, just congratulate them. And uh, we rejoice in that together as a church family. Also, a thank you to Wendy Patterson for delivering our Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. Uh, Wendy, how many did you have? Do you remember? We had 29. 29. So thank you, all those who helped with that. We appreciate that and appreciate Wendy making sure they were dropped off for us. Ladies, don't forget uh, your annual bazaar and bake sale, Septem uh, September, Saturday, December the 4th at 7, 7.30 to noon. You see the quilt up here, their tickets are sold for that. All the details are in your bulletin, ladies. Be sure and uh, note all the things that you need to be part of, and then uh, you be sure to mark your calendars and come. I know many of you are already planning to be here. It's always a good time, and you'll want to come and support the ladies in this endeavor. Also, Aaron's asked me to announce that there'll be choir practice next Sunday at 9.15. So choir members, be sure you note that next Sunday morning at 9.15 and pass that word to others. Couple prayer requests that I need to mention to you so you can jot down. Lisa Stewart's dad fell and broke a couple ribs and you know his health is not very good anyway, but he is in the hospital at Pinehurst and so if you just pray for him and for her as she looks out for him. And then many of you know by now that Teresa Robinson, who's a good friend of our church and many other churches, her mother passed away. And um, they, anytime we do anything here, uh, she's here to help. And her mother was always with her. And her mother worked, uh, we were talking about that uh, a while ago and said her mother was working, you know, the soup and sandwich things that we did. She would be uh, passing out drinks, filling glasses with ice and all. I read the obituary and she was 95. I said, you got to be kidding. I said, I just never would have dreamed. And uh, what a sweet, sweet lady, sweet family. To, to, and so remember them, remember them in this time of their grief and their need. And uh, Russell has an announcement for you this morning. All right, y'all know what next Sunday is, right? It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it is really my birthday. But next Sunday we are celebrating uh, Bruce's last Sunday in the pulpit. And the session is uh, decided that we should get together and eat. So we have uh, a contract with Higgins and Son to have uh, dinner here after church next Sunday in the fellowship hall as soon as the service is over. And uh, we have the pork barbecue and chicken for those who can eat the, the pork and uh, green beans and uh, potato salad and, and slaw and rolls and they'll provide some tea and lemonade. So uh, and since we are still in you know, COVID protocol and trying to be safe, Higgins will serve the food. So uh, that'll limit the contact and we'll try to spread out tables as much as we can and maintain as much social distance as possible. But uh, I want everybody to know up front there that uh, be prepared here in town next Sunday we'll be in church to stay and eat. Let's, uh, let's break bread together one more time. It's a relationship, not forever, not again, but as a relationship with the pastor and, uh, and a church family. Let's eat together one more time with Bruce as we're in that pastor-church relationship. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, but I'm at that point right now where we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not thinking about that. Uh, the Lord's good, and we're going to enjoy today, and we're going to enjoy next Sunday, and then we'll worry about it after that. We're here to worship. That's what brought us together in the first place. That's what's kept us together is the Lord Jesus. He's been good to us. And so we've come to exalt his name, to praise our God, so let's turn our thoughts away from all these things, good as they are, necessary as they are, and let's th think on our Lord Jesus as we worship him together.
Hear the words of the psalmist. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you're a God who has revealed himself to be a God of mercy and grace, a God who keeps his covenant forever, a God who calls us into covenant, who provides all the terms and conditions and meets all those in his son, Jesus Christ, so that we are forever bound to you. You have adopted us and made us your own. We are your sons and daughters, and we stop and say thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You've been so good to us, far more than we ever deserve. And we praise you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for being so rich and generous to us. And in the dark nights of the soul, thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, as we've gathered to worship this morning, we pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you will come and fill our hearts, fill this place, that Jesus would be exalted and that he is exalted. You, our God, would be glorified and praised and thanked. Now teach us to pray as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship this morning, turning to hymn number 525. Hymn number 525, Come Ye Thankful People Come. Let's stand together as we sing all four stanzas.
you'll turn in your bulletins to the prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Our sins trouble us, O oh God. We are troubled by how they have hurt others and by how they have hurt us. Your ways are right, O oh God. And whenever we have refused to follow them, we have found out how right they are. Have mercy on us for the sake of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died to free us from our sins. Amen. Our assurance of pardon comes from Jeremiah 31. The prophet says, No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. You remember this is from one of the great passages in the Old Testament where God speaks to his people, telling them of the future he has for them. Be a time when there is no need for a teacher, because they will know. They will know because God will have put it in their hearts and in their souls because their relationship is such with him that they will know that he is the Lord. And he says, I will forgive their wickedness. I'll forgive their sin. Remember, he's talking to a people who is facing judgment. Some people who heard this message were already in exile. And God speaks to them of forgiveness and will remember their sins no more. One preacher said, I seem to have a much better ability to remember my sins than my heavenly Father does. I said, me too, me too. But when he forgives, he lets it go. So this morning as we confess our sins corporately but individually as well, know that we serve a God who forgives. And when he forgives, he remembers no more. Isn't that good? Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's affirm our faith this morning using the Apostles' Creed. You'll find a copy of that creed on page 12 of your hymnal. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Father, once again, we give thanks that we can gather around your throne. What a privilege we have that we can come as your people, have immediate access to you. We don't have to go through channels. We don't have to wait for permissions and approvals. We come straight to you through Jesus Christ and how we praise you. Oh, how we thank you that even while we're busy living life, Jesus himself is our great high priest who ever intercedes for us. There's never a time when we're not being prayed for. And we thank you. 
Oh, how we thank you as individual believers, as Christian families, as a local church. There's not a time that Jesus is not interceding for us. Oh, how we thank you for your goodness and your love, for your faithfulness. What a wonderful and precious Father you are. On this Sunday, when we focus on Thanksgiving, our hearts are grateful. We're grateful for so many things, but most of all, we are thankful for Jesus. Oh, how we thank you that you loved us and sent your Son. Father, when we contemplate what Jesus has done for us, we marvel. Our mouths are stopped. And when they open, all we can say is thank you. Thank you for sending your son to die in my place that I might be forgiven, that I might be made new, that I might have a future and a hope, that I might have a family. Oh, thank you. Thank you for saving us in Jesus Christ. And now we pray, be with us in these days of transition. Be with us. We haven't been here before. But just as you've been with us in the past, we are confident you will be with us in the future. Remind us that these are mere changes. We won't be finished until we get home. And when we get home, we will be together, never to be separated gathered around your table, gathered around your throne, praising you then, thanking you then as we long to now. Father, we pray that you would give us ears to hear your word as it's preached. Give us minds that will grasp, hearts that will obey. And thank you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the privilege of being their pastor. But more than that, thank you for being part of the church family. You've been good to me. And I praise you and thank you. We make our prayer knowing you hear us not because we're good, but because the one who died for us is. Even Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. If the ushers will come, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings. <clears throat>
Steve, would you lead us, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house today to open our hearts and minds to your word. We pray as we observe Thanksgiving this week that you will make us mindful of all the blessings you bestow upon us each day. But most of all, make us thankful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you bless these tithes and offerings and those who have graciously given them. And we pray that they will be used to further the work of your church, but most of all, to glorify your name. These things we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> If you'll open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1, uh, let me just say that uh, I got sinus issues, not COVID. <laughs> so we live in a time where if somebody sneezes, you do this. If they cough, you do this. You know, I was in a place not long ago and somebody coughed and three people stopped and stared. <laughs> you know, and I said, it's just the way it is. So, uh, so I'm fine. So if I cough, it's just because I got a dry throat. That's all. Okay. And uh, don't want you worrying about me. Think I'm going to croak right here in the pulpit. Uh, but also this sermon, I originally preached seven years ago. Not the same sermon. They never come out the same, but I've also edited it, tweaked it, added to it and all those things. But I said, Lord, that was a good sermon. And the more I've studied it and prayed over it, the uh, I think it's just appropriate for today and for us. Uh, nothing bonds us together like shared experiences. And in writing to the Philippian church, you remember Paul is writing a thank you letter because they have sent support to sustain him as he is in prison for the gospel. He remembers the ministry that they shared together. And they were special to him. They were special because their lives had been changed by the gospel he brought to them. They were special because they labored with Paul to build Christ's church in Philippi. And then through him and other missionaries and other places, they were special because of the bond that they shared in Christ Jesus. A bond that couldn't be broken by separation or by trials and opposition. So Paul is writing to a people that he has a unique and special relationship with. And as he remembered that shared ministry, those experiences, he was filled with thanksgiving. Even though he wasn't a free man, he was free inside. And he was thanking God, rejoicing for what God had done in and through these special people. And as we remember ministry together, our souls should fill with thanksgiving as well. God has done good work and we should thank him and praise him. Philippians chapter one, verse three. This is the word of God. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. There are three aspects to Paul's thanksgiving, and the first is his gratitude for these fellow believers, and you see that in verse 3. He just says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Well, who are the you? Who are the people he's thinking about? Because he's not thinking about nameless, faceless crowds of people. He's thinking about specific people. And I think there was Lydia, the businesswoman. Remember her? Remember the Philippian jailer and his family? We read about those people in Acts 16. Then there was Epaphroditus, the one who brought the gift to Paul, who was with him as he wrote this letter. We see that in chapter 2 and verse 25 of Philippians. Then there were Euodia and Syntyche. He writes about them in chapter 4 and verse 2. Uh, they seem to have trouble getting along. And Paul writes 
to stop that division before it causes real issues. Why? Because they are problem women? No, because they are precious sisters. Part of those he was giving thanks for here, he corrects later. Why? Because they have that kind of relationship. Then in verse 3 of chapter 4, you see he talks about my true companion. We don't know who that was, but they probably did. He mentions Clement, and then he mentions other co-workers. He gets to thinking about those people, and probably like me, he just starts going down the church roll. And remembers this one and that one, and this, oh yeah. And, you know, sometimes I can close my eyes and I just see a snapshot of right now. And they say, well, so-and-so sits here and so-and-so sits there. And, and that's why when you move, I can't take roll accurately. <laughs> You see, Paul was sitting there thinking about these people, and I believe as the Holy Spirit was moving on him to write these things as he was writing them, he was smiling. The joy. We call this an epistle of joy because it just pours out of the words and the phrases. You can sense his joy in this particular group of people. These specific people who formed the body, the church at Philippi. He remembered, oh yeah, me and so-and-so, I remember this. We had that experience. He probably sat back and said, oh yeah, I remember when we first started and we were meeting here and uh, you remember the Sunday, the, the heat went out, the air conditioning came on like froze everybody to death. Now, you know, all those things that happen when you share life together. Say, oh, so-and-so who saved the day because they knew just what to do when this happened. Oh, I miss so-and-so. They were such a positive person that when they walked in the room, it was like everybody felt better. That's what he was thinking about. That's how he's writing. He was giving thanks. There was joy in his heart because of these people. As he prayed for them, remembered them, he was thankful this morning, look around this room. These are the people with whom you minister, with whom some of you have shared all your life. You think about what few things I can remember. You have a lifetime of memories. And then going back, think about those who used to sit here and don't anymore. And all those experiences, and you go, man, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those people. And you laugh, and I've heard the stories, and then their names I'm not going to mention, that if I did, you'd start laughing. Because you'd know exactly that person, this church wouldn't be who we are without that person. You say, well, we might have been a little different. Yeah, but you wouldn't be you. You see, Paul thought about those people and his heart was full of joy and gratitude. Are you thankful for the people you see this morning? You're thankful for those that you don't see and you remember those ministries together, life together as God's people. Does that cause you to give him thanks? Thanks for the special people with whom you've been privileged to minister and share life in his church here. Then in verses 4 and 5, Paul talks about the joy in the shared task. You see, they didn't just sit around and drink coffee. They did things together. They shared life together. They did ministry together. And as Paul thought about that, and I just believe in that setting where he was while he was not free to leave and to go. There were those with him like Epaphroditus and they got, Paul, you remember? You remember when? How many times have we done that? Sitting around those tables back there and somebody would say, so-and-so, you remember when so-and-so did such and such? And Well, sometimes that is even pretty much before I was born. And they start hooting and laughing. And then somebody has to say, wait a minute, we got to tell the preacher about that. And then they tell the story. 
And it was in the context not only of life, but often in doing something for someone. In the ministry of the church, we were doing this, we were doing that, and -and so-and-so, this happened, that happened. It's joy in the shared task, in the ministry. And as Paul thought about the ministry, as he continued to pray for the work in the church at Philippi, his heart was filled with gratitude and joy. When you pray for those in the church, does it bring joy to you as you remember what the Lord has done through you together? Wouldn't be the same if it was just one of us. And I had made a list and this morning I was adding things to it. I said, you got to leave this sermon alone or you'll never finish. But uh, I thought about the, the soup and sandwich things. Talk about organized insanity. And you know the comment we got every time? You all sure do seem to have fun and enjoy one another. Like they were surprised. You mean it's not supposed to be that way? Yeah. But that, what a witness. And we can tell stories about things like that. Relay, I remember showing up here at noon loading the trucks, going over to high school. (laughs) Every year it was, how do you put the tent up? (laughs) Roger knew what I was going to (laughs) say. Because everybody that's been part of that knew that. Now, how did we do that last year? So we've only been doing it for how many years? But see, we remember. Why were we doing that? We're doing it to minister together. And what I found is most often we're the ones ministered to. It was a blessing to be with those people. Just think about the ministry. Hard work? Yeah. Remember the ladies so many times. They brought the food. They prepared the food. They hosted the family after the funeral. And then they stayed and cleaned up after they sent them home, laden most time with anything that was left. Again and again and again, they would do that. Glad to do that. Ministering, sharing the ministry together. Vacation Bible school, work days, serving at the food pantry, senior meals. I had more fun at senior meals. Uh, Jake and Buck and Gerald and Sam can tell some stories. The scary thing is some of them are true. (laughs) I look back those things make me smile and say Lord thank you that I was privileged to be there I didn't help much I was just there kind of in the world and in the way but they were they were ministering to people just doing what God had called them to do I have those memories and it makes me smile and I say, thank you, Lord. And we could go on to Christmas programs and hospital visits and baptisms and funerals and weddings and all those things that we do together. Paul says, as I think back on the ministry at Philippi, those shared ministry experiences, oh, my heart is full of joy as I give thanks. I know I wasn't in Philippi by accident. God brought me there and remembering the shared ministry, reflecting on the way God used these people in Philippi and used him with them, brought gratitude and joyous gratitude to his heart. And so it does to me. And I pray it does to you. For God has worked in many ways to use us and to show his love, to declare his message through us. 
And finally, remembering shared ministry produces a gratitude because Paul had a confidence in the future. A confidence in their future. Verse 6, Paul has a confidence that this isn't the ending of anything, but all that ministry together was just part of the ongoing life of what God had in mind for the people at Philippi. He was convinced that God would accomplish all that he intended in that church. And those Philippian believers, the church there, as long as the church would be there, that ministry would reach its God-ordained purposes. He was confident of that. Well, he knew those people. He knew they couldn't pull it off, but he knew their God. They wouldn't have been there to begin with without God. Remember how they started in the jail prayer meeting with a businesswoman who was praying with some other women at the river. That's how they started. That's how God began that work. And look now, as the work has expanded, they're now supporting Paul as he's preaching the gospel other places. And Paul says, I just want you to know, I am absolutely confident that what God has done in the past, he'll continue until the day of Christ Jesus. It was God's work from the beginning. And Paul was confident in God. This morning, as we remember our shared ministry and experiences, we do think of those who are no longer here. Some have died and gone and joined the church triumphant. Some have moved away. Some are no longer able to be in our physical presence. But the ministry continues, and it will continue. And that's a source of rejoicing and thanksgiving for us as a church. Some of you have seen it. You could stand up and testify and say, yes, my grandparents were here. I'm here. My children are here. My grandchildren are here. What Paul has said about Philippi is true at Bisco. God has been accomplishing his good purposes, and he will continue. And that caused Paul great joy and gratitude. So this morning, as we remember what God has done in and through us and for us and with us, are we thankful? Are we thankful as we look ahead? Scary sometimes. But knowing who captains the ship. And that captain has never lost a ship. Not one. Ministering together in Christ's church, we are knit together in unique and wonderful ways. And that's so true. So, so true. But does our thankfulness demonstrate a gratitude for those with whom we've labored? Maybe this morning as a person flashed across your mind, you said, thank you, Lord. They're just precious. Thank you. Does that demonstrate a joy in the calling we share? Hate to tell you, it ain't over. You're still here. God's got ministry for you. You have a future. Do you have a joy in that calling? It's okay to say, I don't know what's around the bend. Well, none of us do. But God does. The one who leads us on the journey, he knows exactly what's next. And a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, you say, I never would have thought the Lord would have done this. Because that's what we were saying about, what, 13, 14 years ago. This couldn't be happening. And then we said, God did this? Yeah. He hasn't changed. And then do we have a confidence that he indeed has a plan for us? For us as individual believers, for us as Christian families, and for us as a church. And he will accomplish his good plan. I want you to do some things this week as you prepare for Thanksgiving. 
something you can do all year long. Remember what God has done for you in Jesus Christ. Remember the great salvation you have in Him. And how He's grown you. Look back at how that relationship has changed as He has grown you. You'll probably be amazed at how far He's brought you. And you'll be thankful. And then... Ask the Lord to help you remember events that have helped you grow as a Christian. Might have been a revival meeting, might have been a Sunday school class, it might have been a vacation Bible school teacher. It might have been a Christmas program and you said, Lord, I learned that you can get me through anything and I promise I'll never do it again. <laughs> Ask him to remind you of those events, special watershed events where he worked in your life in a way that you look back and say, if, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be where I am now in my walk with the Lord. And finally, remember those God used to minister to you as a believer. I know in the course of my ministry here, I've mentioned people uh, one particular old Sunday school teacher, I just can't wait to get to heaven and see him. You don't think you make a difference. You don't think it touches people's lives, but it does. Because when the tears rolled down his cheeks when he talked about how he loved Jesus, I've never forgotten it. Because where I came from, men didn't cry. But he did. When he talked about Jesus, it touched his heart. Ask God to remind you of some of those people maybe you've forgotten. Or when you were a teenager who somehow God used to bring in your life and just guide you, keep you in the path. Otherwise, no telling where you'd be in. Remember as a young adult, those people who invested in you, included you. And because of them, look where you are now. Ask God to remind you of those who've ministered to you. Because you see, as you do these things, I think what will happen is your gaze will go up. You won't fixate on these people and events. It's going to fill your heart till you're buoyed up and say, Lord, you did that. Just when I needed that, you brought that experience. Just when I needed that person, you brought them. I mean, I look back through my life and I see people that I encountered for a short time, but they affected my life. A pastor came to our church. He said, you need to go finish college. And I thought, well, who are you to tell me? But he was right. And he said, I know just the place and I'll get on the phone and I'll help you. He did. And I went and finished. And I just copied some class notes for Devin on a topic we've been talking about from that college from a professor who was a godly man who still, though he's been dead for years, is teaching through his notes to a little old redneck country boy who went to a college in East Tennessee because a preacher from Atlanta just happened to be at his church that time. I can repeat that story over and over. But you look at your life, ask God to show you. If it wasn't for things like that, that you say, oh, I forgot. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone here. I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't. That, that's God at work moving, and he's still at work. In you, in your children, your grandchildren, as you think on those things, I just believe you'll look up and say, thank you. Only you could do those things. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are loving. And I thank you. May our lives be an expression of gratitude to our God for his love and work in us through Jesus. Father, thank you.
You do good work. And we praise you. And this week, I pray, it won't be just Thanksgiving Day when we say thank you, but that we will begin even now to live a life of gratitude. Uh, just like Russell said in Sunday school, that we just be positive, that, that we would be joyous in ourselves because when we're light, people are amazed. Why are you so happy? What's, what's, what are you grateful for? Oh, you haven't got the time. Brother, let me tell you, Jesus, I'm thankful for Jesus. He's made all the difference in my life. Oh, Lord, use us with an attitude of gratitude to shine for you. And that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number two. Hymn number two, For the Beauty of the Earth. We're going to stand and we're going to sing verses four and five. Verses four and five, hymn number two. Let's stand together as we sing. Receive now the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, today and always. Amen.